welcome back to the Django REST Framework Crash Course. In the last video, we set up our user endpoints to allow an individual to register using our API to log in with their registered account or authenticate themselves, as well as retrieve their user data um, under an authenticated and permission-based endpoint, along with logging out. Now, in this video, we're going to continue and extend on that by creating our CRUD endpoints. So it's going to mimic a very, very basic version of, let's say, the Facebook um, posting a status uh, kind of API or a Twitter tweeting API where you can write, delete, update, um, etc. And this is going to be done using our or using a authenticated user. Now, just to kind of give you a recap. I'm going to go back. I have the server up and running by running Python. I'll just show you now, actually. Python manage.py run server. And this is, of course, inside our project. So back on our on the browser. So using the Django REST framework interface, I can register a user. Uh, so I can say something like email. Now I'll give this Harry. Potter at Hogwarts.com and a password. And I'll say this is welcome to the, or just welcome to my API. So something basic. Um, this also needs, as well as an email and password, we also have to take in a first name. So it's going to be Harry and last name is Potter. And then I'm just going to take this, copy it, because I might I'm going to need the email and password for later and just in case I forget. So post and we get back our new user. So yep, with ID four. And just before I forget, inside this I'm just going to paste in Harry Potter. Actually, I'm going to keep that other user there. So this is just one that I created in the last video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and log in Harry Potter. So I'm going to go to login. So API forward slash login. This takes in an email, which is Harry Potter at Hogwarts.com. And the password which is welcome to my API. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it, and make sure to wrap this inside quotes, and then post. And we get this 200 OK along with um, our login. And so now if I go to API me, um, I see as well in the top right corner, the user that's logged in for the email of that user, as well as the retrieve data on this endpoint API me. But right now, our API doesn't do anything but register and authenticate a user. So let's add some extra stuff to this. Oops, not now. OK, so I've just gone ahead and shut the server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. And this is going to be called Python manage py start app, not new project, sorry, a new app. And I'm just going to call this status. So now in the file directory, I have this status that you can see just where my mouse is. And within that, let's go ahead and create a model that will mimic a status. So the first thing is to yeah, create it, create the class. So class status this is going to inherit from models.model. And the first thing is going to be a foreign key to the user. So the user that wrote the status. And to get that, I'm just going to say models dot foreign key. And I need the user model and the recommended way to actually use the user model um, in uh, as a foreign key. You can, of course, import the model from like, say, from user dot and then models or whatever. Um, however, Django does not recommend that. Uh, so the, the way in which uh, Django does recommend is to actually import it from the settings. So say from django.con import settings. And then just here, I'm going to say settings dot 
auth in capitals auth user model and then i'm going to say oops, auth user model like that and then say on delete i want this to cascade so when i delete the user i want all of the all of the users uh, statuses to delete as well i don't even know if statuses is a word um but anyway then verbose name i'm just going to say user next i'll say the content so the kind of the text that's going to be added to the status is models dot text field you can of course use a char field if you want to set like a limited number of characters but text field will work fine as this is just a basic api and i'm going to call this I'm just say content and then the date published and that's going to be models dot date time field i'm going to say auto now add to true which means that this will be created the moment we create an uh, an instance or an object out of this and then verbose name and this is just date published okay so that's our status nothing fancy here and then back inside our core directory so the one that has the, contains the settings file in that in the installed apps i'm just going to add status down below okay so we have our status model so nothing fancy just takes three fields our user content date published you can add whatever you want to this but i'm just going to leave it at that as this is we're going to focus more on the api building okay so we have our model so the first thing is to make the migration so python manage make migrations so now we have create model status inside our status directory under migrations we have this triple o one initial and then let's apply it so python manage.py and then migrate so now it's been applied to our uh, SQLite database. Okay, so that's our model done. I'm gonna close this. And inside our status directory, we don't need this views.py file as we're not creating any Django views, but instead we'll be creating APIs. So I'm just gonna rename this to APIs. And just to be consistent, I just wanna see what I named it in users. Or user, yep, APIs as well. So it's called APIs. Inside this, this is where we'll uh, create all of our endpoints for writing, reading, updating, deleting a status. We also want a serializes file, and this is just to keep everything clean and like in its like appropriate place. So serializer, and also let's create a services file just to like keep all of our functions that we need when feeding and writing to a database in one place so services like so okay so let's first start off with our serializer and i've just closed the file explorer just to give some more space so for our serializer we first need to make our imports so we need from rest framework import serializers and let's create our status serializer so i'm going to call this status serializer and it's going to inherit from serializer.serializer and we're going to have an id so the id of the status object which is serializers.integer field and then read only set this to true as we do not want to write an id id will be set by the model by the database um, and this is something that we do not ever want to alter. And then we'll have the content, which is serializers dot char field. We need the date published, which is serializers dot date time field. Just to ensure that we are naming it appropriately in line with our models so we have content and date published and after that we need the user so user 
And we can set this to like either the user ID. So we can say something like user ID, and then we can say serializes dot integer field. However, I want to actually return the JSON representation of our user model that wrote it. So to do that, I'm just, we already have in our user app, a serializer that we defined, which is this one. So this uses serializer here, and I want to make use of that one. So first I need to actually import that from user import serializer as user serializer. And then just here, instead of saying user ID, say user serializer dot user serializer. And this is also going to be read only as true. Okay, so the next thing is just like we did with our user um, serializer here, where we kind of map the the dictionary uh, representation of our JSON, the Python dictionary, to a data class. We're going to do that here as well with status. And if you're watching this and you haven't seen my other video, I have given an explanation as to why I do this. Uh, a, a preference and kind of just a different kind of perspective on how to handle Django REST framework serializers. So here I'm going to say super, which will call the parent classes um, to internal value, path and data. Then I'm going to return, and this is going to return a data class representation of our status. So right now we don't have that. So let's go ahead and define that within our services file. And sorry about the whole, I keep double clicking for some reason. Um, but inside services, let's go ahead and create our data class. So first I'm going to import data classes and then I'm just going to define it. So data classes dot data class and then class status data class. And then under this, I'm going to say the content is of type string, the date published. is of type date time. So we need to import date time, date time dot date time. And by default, this is going to be none. So when we create it, of course, we're not going to be posting a date published uh, with our API when create, when writing a status, um, this comes back after creation. So, the next one is user and this we need the user data class that we wrote inside user the user app which is this one here so we need this user data class and in order to do that we need to just import it so from user import services we'll say as user service so here we'll say user service dot user data class and by default we'll set this to none and finally we need the id which again will be none as well and that's because these three we will not post to begin with we're only going to be posting the content we don't need to post the user as the user will already be authenticated and will be part of the request content anyway okay so let's create our from instance model uh, class so it will be a class method to be from instance. So just like we had in our user data class, this from instance is kind of like a helper method to map a user model to our data class. We'll say from instance, and this will take in a status, so status, and let's just quickly add some types. And of course, types are, especially in Python, they're a heavily debated topic as to whether or not we should be using types and um, whether or not it's important. But for the sake of clarity for this tutorial, I think it helps for it. But of course, you don't need to add this. So I'm just going to import typing. So import or from typing, import type checking. And then say if 
type checking. And if you guys want to see a video on um, Python typing, uh, feel free to let me know. And of course, I will go and look into um, yeah recording a tutorial on that. But here, I'm going to say from models import the status. So, and then just that, I'm going to say in double quotes status. And this will just do return CLS. And I'm just gonna, let's just add the type here as well. So this is going to return a status data class. The content is going to be status dot content. And to make this a bit more explicit as to what this is, I'm just gonna call this status model. So status underscore model content and then the date published is status model dot date published the id is status model dot id and finally we need to say the user is status model dot user Okay, so that's our from instance. Now back in our status serializer, we can use that. So let's first import the um, the the data class itself, and just like we did in the user serializer, where we have from um, services. So let's just say from the following app, or so from this app, import services and we'll just return services dot user or stata data class, status data class and then we can just unpack our data like so okay so uh, we have our status serializer so let's go ahead and start building our api so inside apis.py inside the user directory so this one here oh sorry not the user one the um, the status one, just gonna close a few of these. Um, okay, so to start building, let's go ahead and create our post create our status create list API. So from REST framework, import views, and from REST framework, import a response and so let's say class status create list api this is going to inherit from views dot api view we need the authentication class because we don't want a unauthenticated user to be able to write a um a post a status so to do that Let's go ahead and import it from user. So from user import authentication. And then here, let's say authentication classes equals, and then inside a tuple, we'll say authentication dot custom user authentication, the one that we wrote in the last video. We want the permission classes, and we need to import that from a REST framework. So from REST framework, import permissions say so here again inside a tuple and make sure you add the comma at the end i made the mistake in the last video and forgot but say yeah, permissions and then is authenticated comma okay so that's how authentication classes and permission classes sorted now for the we need a post endpoint or for this endpoint we'll be accepting post just put pass there for now and we'll also be accepting get which is also a request like that okay so let's first tackle the post now for this we need to first say serializer equals serializer and we need to import serializer as well so from this app import serializer say serializer 
dot um yeah dot i think yeah so we have for some reason it's not picking this up and i think again is to do with the way i do my imports so i'm just going to grab this okay for some reason it's complaining i don't know why but anyway so serializer dot um status serializer and then data equals request dot data and that's spell it wrong or ah okay yeah it's the renaming part so i'm just going to say as um status serializer okay status serializer there we go silly mistake and then serializer is valid so we'll just check to see if everything that's been added to the body of this request um is valid and if it's invalid then we want to raise an exception then we'll say data equals serializer dot validated data and then we want to create i'm just going to write this as a comment create a status okay so the thing with to, to do that let's jump back into our services um file again i double click sorry for the jumping around and the first thing is to write a function that will allow us to create a status so i'm going to say create underscore status and we'll, this will have a user it will also have a post um, or status and this of course will be a data class because remember with the serializer we're mapping our dictionary to a let me just go back so we're mapping this one we're mapping our uh, our dictionary so we get back a dictionary by default with uh, the django rest framework serializer but we're mapping this to our data class um or that we created and this is just by overriding the two internal value that comes with serializer okay so back here we'll say this status is of type status data class and this is going to return the status data class as well as we're going to use this from instance method okay so here we'll say the status create equals and then models we need to import models as well so from this app import models as status models and then here we'll say status models dot status then object dot create and let's fill it in so we'll have the content which is equal to the status so the status that we're passing in in the as an argument dot content and also the user, which is the status, or which is the user itself, because we have that from the body of our post request. Okay, and then finally, we will just return the status data class, and then do a from instance, and we'll chuck in our, our status model, status create. And that's our create. Whilst we're here, let's uh, actually go ahead and write our get all post. So for our list one, so if we go back to our status API, we have this post. And yeah, actually, let's just finish this one off. So inside the status create list API, let's go ahead and get rid of that comment. And we'll say the serializer dot instance equals services or well, we actually have to import that so from and uh, then import services as actually we just call it services like that services dot create status 
passing the user, which comes from our request.user, and then also the status itself, which is our validated data here. We'll just say data. And then finally, we can return that. So I'm going to say return response dot response and set data to serializer dot data. So this just sets, we create our status. This returns a, a, a status data class. And then we associate that with the serializer instance. And then when we, in order to return it, we just say response. We set the data to the serializer data, which is basically mapping this instance to the data and then returning that in a JSON format. So that's our post. We can actually go ahead and try it out. But first we need to add that to our URL. So inside the status directory, let's create a new file for this URL. And then let's go ahead and add in our URLs for create. So from django.url URLs import path. And then from this app, import APIs. And then we'll say URL patterns equals a list. And this is a path. And we'll say posts or status. And this endpoint will be our APIs dot um, status create list API and then as view and we'll just give it a name of status like so and then finally in our core um, directory let just under the eight uh, the one with the user URLs we'll say path and then API forward slash include and then status dot URL. Okay, let me just close that. If I open the terminal, let's go ahead and run this. So Python manage run server. Now let's go over to API for such status. We get an error that's oh, because we haven't finished our get response. Um, and I think that's why. Yeah, I would assume so. It doesn't, yeah, expected a response, HTTP response or whatever to be returned from the view, but received a class none type. And that's because we have in our uh, status APIs, this get, which is doing a pass, we should actually be returning a response. We can do that just by saying response dot response. And then we'll just give it some arbitrary data. We'll just say dick. Um, I will just say, hello, do the job, refresh, yep. Okay, let's actually post something. So remember when we post, we actually, we will be returning that, um, that status that we just created. And given that we're already logged in, it should work fine. So we'll say content, and this content will be, hello, this is my first post or status update and then post and date published this field is required and let's go back to our serializer so we have this date published here and we haven't said anything apart from the fact that we need a date published so we have to explicitly tell django that this date published is going to be read only and we will not be writing this so to say that we say read only because read only by default is set to false. So we have to explicitly say read only is true. Now if we go back, let's give this a go again. We'll go back to this endpoint and then say the content. And let's actually add something more relevant to our person logged in. So Harry Potter, I am a wizard. Post. And there we go. We have our first post, we have the ID of one, we have the content, which is I am a wizard, we have the date published, so the date and the exact time, the user, which is ID, which has the ID, the first name, last name, and email. 
Now, of course, we could have just said user ID, which then just returns four. However, just to give you an idea of how we can return a serializer that we defined elsewhere inside a new serializer, this is how it's done. And it's quite simple with Django REST framework. All you have to do is specify it here as we did with user. Okay, so that's post working. Let's get our list endpoint working. So this get, and this is going to return a list of all the posts um, from that user. Now for that, let's go ahead and into back into our services. Let's create some functions and some helper functions to help us write this. So I'm just gonna shrink this a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this function get user status. Yeah, I don't know statuses. I don't think that's a word actually, but um, yeah, just to kind of um, yeah state or let's actually just call it status. Um, yeah, let's call it status just to stay in line with the English language. Um, so this will take in our user and this will return the authenticated users posts. So for that, let's go ahead and first do a query. So we'll say user status equals and then models. So status models. And then say, actually for this endpoint, yeah, let's just keep it as is. So status models dot status dot objects dot filter. And we want to get all that um, have, that have been created by this user. So we'll say that the status, given that like we have a foreign key to user, so we'll say that here, the user equals the user. So now we have all of our status from this user. Then we want to return it in the format of this status data class. And bear in mind, this can return one or more uh, or zero or more um, uh, objects. So it doesn't return a single one. Therefore, it has to be a list. And to do that, let's first, let's actually do a list comprehension. We'll say return. And then in square brackets, status for status in actually um, say single status in single status. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. For single single status for single status in user status, and then here for the first part of our list comprehension, we will say wrap that in parameters and say user or status data class dot from instance. And that will say for every single status in user status, throw that into our instance from the data class or so we'll create a data class out of it. And this list, this is a list of status data class. Okay, I'm not complaining, unresolved reference user. And that's because we need to from user import user from user dot models import user. Now that shouldn't complain. I don't know about this object. I think it's because this PyCharm doesn't pick it up. But okay, so that's our get user status. Now back in our API, let's go ahead and call it. So. To do that, it's a lot more simpler than the post request. We'll say the status collection equals, and then the services dot get user status. We'll pass in a user, which is request dot user. And then the serializer, which is the serializer, status serializer dot status serializer, and then We'll pass in the status collection. And then the final thing is to say that many equals true. And that's to tell Django that we're going to be returning 
um, zero or more objects. And then finally, inside this response, get rid of that hello and say serializer.data. Now, if we head back, refresh. Now on this API status, you see now we have these square brackets and we have this, um, our first post. Let's write another one actually, let's say content. Um, I want to learn more Python magic and then post it. So we get back the object that we just created. And then if we go back, hit fresh or hit enter URL, you get back all of your posts. And we have the first one, which is I'm a wizard. And then we have, I want to learn more Python magic. Cool. Okay, so that's for our user. And we didn't have to add anything to our URLs because this encapsulates the status create list API, takes in both of the post and get. The final kind of endpoint that we want is one that will first get back a detail status. So a single status, we want um, to be able to delete it and also update it. So let's go ahead and create that. And just down here, let's call this class and then status retrieve and then update, delete. I just like to name the uh, class itself, the API class after everything that I will do, just so we're clear. And then views.api view. This of course will need the authentication and permission classes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And then down here, paste it. So for the first one, we want our get, and this will have a request and also the status ID. And if you're unsure about that right now, I'll go ahead and show you in a second. So just say return. And then for now, we'll say response dot response and data equals sum. Okay, so what is with this status ID? Now, in order to retrieve an individual status, we need something that will be able to identify um, with a unique identifier for our status. And as we know, like in, with each, each object that we create in our database, the ID will always be unique. So it will be from one all the way to N to a hundred to whatever. So we actually go back. We see that this status has an ID of one. This status has an ID of two. Okay. So with that knowledge, we can say that the status ID will be two in the case of I want to learn more Python magic, and then I'm a wizard, the ID is one. And this is what the status ID will represent. So inside our URLs, let's go back here in status, in the status URLs, down below, let's create a new path. This again will be status, but then we'll say int as integer, and that will represent the ID. And we'll just call this status underscore ID. And the status underscore ID has to be the exact same or whatever you put here has to be the exact same as this thing here, as this argument for our get. Okay. So let's just finish this off and say APIs dot status retrieve update delete dot as view and name, we'll call this status detail. Okay, we can actually go to it now. We see that with ID one, go to that one there. And we just get stuck. We don't get any other information. We can actually go to any ID, like we can actually enter whatever number we want, we'll get the same. But we don't want that. We only want to return something if the status with the ID exists. So back in our APIs, let's go ahead and get this get function um, up and running. So I'm just gonna close the models um, file and then inside our status services, let's create a function that will get um, status or user status detail. And then say user, say list, 
uh, not list, sorry, this will just be an individual item, so state and stage class. Okay, so we all, we have the user, but we also need the ID. So we'll say status underscore ID, and this will be an integer. And then we'll use this. There's a Python shortcut called get object of 404, and we'll use that. So we can say in the import from Django dot shortcut import get object of 404. And what this does is it's like a helper function where we pass in a model, we pass in any kind of arguments or queries, that, uh, arguments that we want. And it will then try and fetch it. If it cannot find it, it will return a 404, which is exactly what we need. So let's go ahead now and say user, I'll just say status equals get object of 404. We first need to pass in the model that we want to query. So we'll say models, status models dot status. And then we want to pass in the arguments for what we want to find. Now for that, all you need to do is say the primary key equals, and then we'll say status ID. And then let's just go ahead and say return status data class. And we have to map this using our from instance. We'll say status model equals status. Cool. So that's our get user detail. Um, service function. Now back in our APIs, we can go ahead and call that. So inside the get, let's go ahead and say um, status equals services dot get user status detail user equals request dot user and the status ID is the status ID here. And then finally, we'll say serializer equals status serializer, status serializer, and we'll pass in the status. And we don't need to put this many equals true as we did with our list endpoint, as we're only returning one object. And then finally, down here, we'll say data equals serializer dot data. Okay, so that's our get. Go ahead and test that out now. So here, I'm just going to hit enter, and we get back the status with ID of one. We try it with two, as we know this one exists. We get two. We can try it with one that we don't, we know that doesn't exist. So I can try like this huge number and we get detail not found. And that's exactly what our get object of 404 does. It handles that for us. And you can see here, HTTP 404 not found. Okay, so that's nice. Let's go back to this one. So we have our get. We don't have any other kind of like um, uh, HTTP functions added. So let's go ahead and do that. We want the delete. So we'll say delete. So again, we'll be request and then status underscore ID. Say pass. And we also want the put. So request and then status underscore ID and then pass. And if we actually go back and then refresh, you'll see now we have this delete that's been added and also this content box for our put uh, update. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the function for that. So for our delete inside the status services, let's create a new function. This will be delete user status. And this will take in the same parameters as this. Actually, I don't know why we need user there. Um, ah, yes. We also want to actually back it now and get user status detail. We can also specify the user. However, this is just getting based on ID, so we can leave out the user there. Okay, so the status ID will have, in this case, we will say user, because we want only the user that's authenticated to be able to delete. And then we also need the status underscore ID. We'll say status data class. Okay, so first let's do this whole status get object for a four. We'll copy that. Next, we'll say status or if status dot user is not equal 
the user, actually let's just say user ID dot ID equals user dot ID. Then we can actually return a 404. Uh, to do that, you can actually import from Django REST framework. So from REST framework, import HTTP for response, I think. Ah, status, status, like that. And down here we can just say return status dot http actually and we'll just ignore it so we'll just say we'll just give a warning message so we'll say um if status dot user dot id does not equal user dot id then um return say we will raise, um, I think, HTTP error. I don't know where those are again from. Um, okay, we'll just leave that out for now. Sorry for the laziness, um, but I think it worked fine without it. Um, what we can do is just to say in here, user equals user. And then we'll just do status dot delete like so. And then what we can add is in that, we'll just say that's actually it. So we can leave it at that. Um, for the exception, actually, I think it would be a good idea to add that. Just like it, it bothered me if I just left it out. We can, if it's from a REST framework, uh, import exceptions, there we go. And then down here we can say, let me just get rid of this here. Sorry for the back and forth. Um, and then if user dot ID not equal the status dot user dot ID, then we'll say raise exception dot, um, and we'll say permission denied. And I think that would be enough to kind of clarify that yeah, you're not allowed to delete, you're not the user. Um, so we'll say, oops, um, you're not the user pool. And then finally, we'll just do status.delete and that should be the end of it. Okay, so we have this delete user status. So inside our APIs, let's go ahead and complete delete and just go ahead and make a call. So for that, we'll say services dot uh, delete user status. We'll pass in the user being request dot user and the status ID being status ID. And then we want to return a 204 no content. So we say return response dot response and status equals status, which we need to import. That's funny, that's for status as well. I think that might be misleading. And hopefully it doesn't conflict with any of our imports. Nope. So from REST framework, this status is very different from the status that we created. Uh, so please, uh, yeah, I actually would call this as um, REST status, just to avoid any confusion. And then here we'll say REST status dot http 204 not no content all right let's go ahead and actually try that out so we have this here and user status detail yep we need to get rid of that in this here so in the get okay let's just refresh this all right let's try to delete this delete we get this nice pop-up that comes with the uh, interface delete and we get this 204 no content if we try and go back to this now we get no not found go back to our list endpoint now we just have id2 okay you can go ahead and try this out with another user just for the sake of time i'm going to leave that out for now and come back to that in the next video but that's our delete and then finally let's go ahead and try with put okay so with put, 
we'll do essentially be doing the same thing um, as with post and yeah, as with uh, post to be honest. Um, but for a more detailed view, so I'm just going to actually keep that there. In services, let's go ahead and create a new function called update status. Now, all that will do is just change the content. We don't want anything else changed. And we'll say update user status. Say user as user. And then the status underscore ID as an integer. We also want the post data uh, or the status data. So we'll say for this one, the status for data is status data card. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is see if the, we actually need to get the status. So we'll do this whole get object for a call. Do it. And then like we didn't delete, we have to check if the user owns it. Let's just paste that in as well. So if the user does not equal the user that, or the user ID that created that status, then we will say permission denied if you're not a user pool. Otherwise, they're free to go ahead and update it. And we'll say the status.content equals the status data content. And then finally, we'll say status.save. And we can go ahead and return that status. So we'll say status data class from instance, and then status model equals status. Oops, did I import something accidentally? Nope. Okay, yeah. So we have our update user status. And then back in our APIs, let's go ahead and fill that in quickly. So for this, Let's go ahead and say the serializer equals serializer, status serializer dot status serializer, and data equals request dot data, and then serializer dot is valid, raise exception to true, and then status equals serializer dot validated data. So again, very much like how we did the post. Serializer dot instance, say services dot update user status, user equals user, equals a request dot user. And then we'll say that the status ID is status ID. And the status data equals the status that we got here from the validated data. Okay, so that hopefully, if everything's worked out fine, we can then return the response dot response and say data equals serializer dot data. And there we go. That's how we put. Let's go ahead and test this out. Just refresh this page. So for this one, let's change the content. So I want um, I want learn more Python magic. Got it. Um, so yeah, let's actually fix that and add some more to it. So content, I want to learn some more Python magic on the Rhythmic YouTube channel. Yeah, great English there, but let's go ahead and run this. So uh, this is the post. Actually, let me just copy this and go to status two, and then let's do it here, and then put. And now we get, I want to learn some more Python magic on the Rhythmic YouTube channel. And if we go back, we can see that it's actually updated. If we go to the list, you can see it's been updated there. Okay, so that's the... Um, yeah, our kind of CRUD endpoints when authenticated. We can actually try this out quickly to just see what it would be like if we did it without logging in. So we can get back um, the status. Um, did I add? Yep. If 
I try to post something, just copy all that and just get rid of this. Just keep the content. Oh, I'm not logged out. That's because. Okay, log out. <laughs> and then post. So now we're logged out. And then status. I get authentication credentials are not provided. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, remember how we have the authentication classes. So we cannot read, write when we're not logged in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you log in, you can log in with another account, write some posts, try to delete them, update them. But yeah, that's essentially it for this video. So that's the CRUD endpoint. I'm sorry about the minor mistakes I made throughout. Uh, however, in the next video, we're going to look at writing PyTest for our Django REST framework application. And that will pretty much conclude this series. I hope you found some value in this video. And yes, see you in the next one.